Uh, hi there, thank you for joining me. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a very, very short video and I'm going to be talking about uh, spatial statistics. Uh, in particular, I'll be talking about the zonal statistics tool. I find this a very, very useful tool, uh, especially when you're trying to analyze so many data sets and you're trying to bring all of them into one analysis. So if you're doing a multi-criteria analysis or you're doing some sort of a modeling which you which requires you to have uh, different data sets all put into one model uh, you can find this uh, tool very very useful uh, i mean i used it some months ago for a morphometric analysis within a watershed and it was very useful for me to understand how uh, different things were behaving within the watershed area at different points uh, within the watershed. Uh, so what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to use the zonal statistics tool because I find it very useful. I hope uh, if you're watching, you're going to find this useful too. Uh, this is the first layer here is just a study area boundary. And the second one is the zone data. So my study area has been broken up into four different zones. And the uh, third layer here is just my digital elevation model, uh, which is of course in meters above sea level. And uh, the last one is the slope, uh, which is in percentage rise. Uh, so my slope within the study area rises from zero to 52.9%. And what I want to do is uh, understand uh, the statistics of the digital elevation model and the slope model within each of these four zones. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, go to my search bar and type in zonal, enter. And there are two zonal statistics tool uh, within the toolbox here. Uh, one of them uh, is just zonal statistics, which can only calculate one statistic type at the moment. And it uh, gives you an output of a raster. I don't really find that fancy uh, for me, actually. I prefer to use the zonal statistics as table. Why? Because this gives me an output as a table, which can be very useful. I can export this table out to Excel and do my further analysis. And uh, the second good thing about it is that you can actually calculate all of these statistics at one time. Uh, so if I just leave it at all, it's going to calculate all the statistics. We have the range, standard deviation, uh, minority, maximum, median, and all of these statistics, which can be very useful again in your uh, analysis. Uh, so the first one I want to do here is just uh, for the digital elevation model, I want to understand the statistics of digital elevation model uh, above sea level within each of these four zones I have here. So I'm going to bring in my zone data. It's going to be my input uh, raster of future zone data. I'm just going to drag it and put it in there and the digital version model goes in as the input value raster and i'm just going to let it go to the default geo database and i'm just going to say zono underscore dm for digital version model and i'm going to set the st uh, statistics type to all so it calculates all of this statistics again for me and it's going to give me an output table uh, just click on ok Yep, that's good. So I do have my table here of describing the statistics of my four zones. So you can see I have only four attribute data here. And all of the statistics have been calculated for each of these zones. Uh, the area, the minimum elevation, the maximum elevation, the range between the elevations, uh, the mean elevation, the standard, and the sum and the variety. There you go, you have all of them. And I can just run the same tool uh, the same way for the slope. This time around, I'm going to put in my slope as the input value raster, and I'm just going to drag in my my zone data into the zone data, and I'm just going to leave it at all statistic type. I'm going to click on OK, and there you go. I have two tables here. So this is my digital elevation model, and this is my slope. So uh, within my four zones I have a mean slope of 4%, 4.6, 6.9, 5 5.9. So this again can be very useful when you're looking at things like watershed analysis or you're trying to do some hypsometric analysis and it's, it's just going to help you better understand uh, your topographic nature within each of these zones. So uh, if I have a high minimum high mean slope uh, there's a possibility of uh, erosion or uh, 
but it's probably been eroded or there's going to be a high risk of erosion and when you have a very uh, low mean slope uh, it means you're within a, a flat land and if you're close to a, a river or a valley then you might want to start thinking of things like flooding uh, anyways that's just thinking outside the box uh, so now that i have these two tables i can go ahead and do a join i can do a join because there is a common field which is this object id which has been taken from the zone field that i have here object id so there is this common field between this zone and the uh, tables so i can just go to my zone right click do the join join and i'm going to choose uh, object id and zone l for the digital vision model I'm going to so they both have the same similar uh, attribute field and i'm just going to click on ok and if i go into zone now I can see that uh, all of the statistics that has been calculated from the table is now added to my one zone layer which I can now use for further analysis so I wouldn't be needing this digital elevation model and the slope because I have all of this information in one layer and I can start doing things like uh, start doing things like uh, symbolizing the data and uh, if I can look at the the zones based on the maximum elevation uh, even though that's not very that's not probably the best example to use here i can start looking at it based on uh, mean elevation something like that again uh, this is just going to give you an idea of how each of this the topography within each of these zones behaves and it can help you better understand your study area and help you make better decisions on what you're, you're, you're doing. Uh, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, Zonal Statistics is a very good tool. I hope you find it useful in your GIS life. Thank you very much for watching.